Hello everybody, how's it going and welcome back to another video about Assassin's Creed Unity and today I've got some news coming from Polygon about Assassin's Creed Unity which details different things about assassination, different things about gameplay features, different things that are included in the game just, you know, just general stuff. So, um, we'll get this thing started. It says, the moments after the assassination with the targets that deepened their past and motivations have changed. So, you know how usually, like, you take out a guy and then you, like, sort of speak to him for a bit, you sort of, like, say stuff and all that. Um, it's, it's been changed. Uh, just before the moment of the assassination, time is slowed down just before the blade hits, and the target sees his life in front of his slash her eyes, and the player can see the, the like, the target's memories as well. Um, these memories will co also cover parts of the plot that are not explained in the main story. These memories also show the target's perspective on what is shown, deepening his or her character. For example, if the player is searching for the culprit of something and the target knows who it is, the culprit could be seen through his or her memories. This mechanic, being able to see the flash of uh, the target's memories, will also be explained in terms of plot um, and be an offshoot of the eagle sense. So that is really cool. Like, so it sort of shows like it's sort of a new way of sort of finding things out. So say you know where your mate, like you don't know where your main target is, but you know where one of his men are. Um, like one of his close men, you can find like maybe like Tail, one of the little foot soldiers. He'll be delivering a letter. You then you then kill the guy, take the letter, and it will tell you where like his like one of his close friends is. Then you then go kill the close friend, and then you can see through his memories uh, where your main target is, and you go take out the main target, which is really it's a really cool feature. So it leaves sort of like a lot of new gameplay, which is actually really really cool uh, to sort of see. Uh, the next thing says not all interiors contain a mission, but all the interiors tell a story. So that could mean um, I, I was watching an interview. Um, where Alex Amuncio, the uh, creative developer, I think that's his, I think that's his like role. I'm not actually too sure. Um, but he said how you might go in, and you, maybe you get like one of the murder mysteries where you can sort of like you know, you can go and like sort of try and solve the murder, and you can accuse someone. You could possibly accuse the wrong person, and then you could, when you actually go into the jail, you can sort of see them in their cells. You know, we're sort of wanting to get out and everything, uh, which is really really cool. Um, or you could just find maybe like a letter. Or you could find maybe like a, a like a note or a song or like another one was if you go in and you see a bit of blood you might activate eagle pulse and then you can see the trailer leading to a painting and then when you check behind the painting you can see like uh, there's something secret behind the painting which is really cool so not all will contain an exact quest but they'll all have something something in there that's important uh, the next thing is the villa of the main character similar to like the villa of assassin's creed 2 um, is the Revolutionary Cafe, a place people share ideas and act for a theatre and sing. So that's kind of cool, that that's where he sort of lived. It's kind of like, um, if you remember the game The Saboteur, I think he lived in like a strip club type thing. He kind of lived in there and you know, like he, he's, his house was like, his room was kind of like in the back. And that's kind of where like all of like the revolutionary people lived in that game. Because I was saying Paris too, which is actually kind of, kind of cool to think about. But um, yeah, that's kind of cool to know you have got like your little house. Uh, I mean, you did in AC3, which was kind of called the homestead, and then you also had, um, Ed Edward had his home on Ig- in Oh, shit, what's the play? Okay, I always call it Iguana, but it's not Iguana. Mm. Gr uh, Great Inagua, that's the one. Uh, it was, yeah, it was there, and that was kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go move on to the next one. Each district of Paris has hubs that the protagonist will be able to take back from the Templars and then renovate. These cafes will connect, um, connect to one of the- w one of- one of the that's literally what it says it says these cafes will connect to one of the so more of the hubs will be freed um the more shows will be represent um represented in the theater the protagonist cafe for some districts it may be some songs and for other poetry um, and political speeches plays and so on which is kind of really cool like that sort of brings more depth to the world and being able to renovate things is a really really cool feature that they're bringing back into assassin's creed unity because i love the renovating in the older assassin's creeds uh, which generally is really really cool. Uh, the next one is in the early stages of research the team has a full time person in chain time person in charge of carrying out the research so you know historian uh, about the historical uh, elements of the game um, for like all the different things that appear in the game that are to do with historical like accuracy which we obviously knew that they do do that uh, pre previous games. In addition to this, the team relies on specialists for Unity. For the example, two French historians examined a script to check if they were if there are any historical em uh, errors regarding the revolution. Uh, even the construction of the city, the team called architects, urban designers, and archaeologists, and the team also travelled to Paris to get old maps of the city. In addition to that, for every part of the research, the team had a person responsible for it. For example, six months a person dealt with the letters, which is really really cool that they go into so much depth to do this, and also. I uh, don't know if you've noticed, they are actually all English, and there was um, an interview, it was I think it was the same interview, 
where he explained why that is and it doesn't make too much sense he said um because you're seeing it through the eyes of like an english person so it's sort of translating it sort of to you so um which is kind of odd i mean in Revel um, revelations ac brotherhood and ac2 don't know why i said them the wrong way but in those games uh Ezio spoke with his italian accent uh, everyone had an accent in the game Although, now I think about it, that was because of a glitch in the Animus. Rebecca did say in AC2 that the only reason they had an English accent is because the Animus had some sort of glitch in it, which um, kind of makes sense when you think about it now. That is the reason Ezio spoke with an English uh, like dialect, but not his accent. It's just because there was a glitch. He was meant to have an English accent, um, but Italian sort of got through like the glitch because obviously it's not professional Animus. And that is why in Assassin's Creed 1, Altair spoke with an American accent. It's because Abstergo had sort of like, you know, a much better, a much better Animus. And in AC4, it was obviously Abstergo again, and everyone spoke English except for languages which didn't sort of um, make sense to be hearing. Like, so if you're not, so, so, so say um, you, you were playing as an English person. So to them, they wouldn't have understood any French. They wouldn't have understood any Spanish. So when you hear that in the game, you don't understand it because the character wouldn't. But in this game, everyone is French. So you're playing as a French protagonist. So you're speaking with an English, like speaking with an English accent because there's no glitch, and you can understand everyone else because you are French in the game. It's kind of difficult to understand. It took me like about a day to actually get my head around that. I just realised now. Literally, I've just had the revelation just now of what actually all of that means. But that's what he meant when he said it is kind of hard to explain. Uh, the next one is to demonstrate the historical research behind the game. An anecdote was told. Towards the end of the game, the team wanted to add a part, uh, which was very dramatic. It's this very dramatic event which takes place, and a character of the game must make a very difficult decision. The team wanted something to symbolise the importance of the situation. For this reason, the team wanted to create a scene outside of the city with a large army, a situation that had to do with Napoleon. While this scene might seem credible, if it happens six years later, whose six years, uh, those six years were crucial, so the team had to find another solution. Uh, so that, that's, that's really cool, so we know now towards the end of the game it's not in Paris, it doesn't take place in Paris. So could this have something to do with the first civs and stuff like that, but I um, was saying about Napoleon and stuff like that, so that's kind of cool that they had to get it exactly right, because if it was six years later it would have made sense, but the six years were so crucial that they couldn't have done that. Um, and the next one, which is the last one, says the co-op will be online only while playing, uh, um, only while the single player can normally be played offline. That doesn't even make sense, but the co-op's online, single player offline, obviously, that makes sense. And there is free roam in the co-op. You can get your friend to just hop into your session, which is like your world. You go free roam, you can do all the missions that would normally be in the game, except for the story quests. So everything apart from story quests, which is kind of like the Far Cry 4, uh, like, uh, co-op, which is really, really cool, actually, that that happens, because I would not want to play the single player co-op, but I would love to play everything else co-op, because that would be a lot of fun to play with your friends, and to play with you guys as well. Um, obviously, there are there are set missions revolving around the co-op, but you can play those single player. So if you wanted to go ahead and tackle them single player, you can, but it will be very difficult. Um, but still, that's kind of cool to have a challenge, see if you can accomplish them. I'll, I'll probably have a go at some of those, see what you can do. And another thing is all of the characters are Arno. Okay, so you're seeing you, yourself as Arno, and you're seeing them as they see themselves, except they've changed the face. The only thing they change is the face. Um, so you'll see your face as Arno, they'll see your face as someone else, but you, you'll see their face as someone else. But they're, they're, I'm pretty sure their outfit and robes and armour and equipment all stays the same as what they have on their screen. It's just the face that changes. So it really shows the amount of customization you can actually do to Arno, and that is insane. I can't wait to see some more of the co-op because that is actually really interesting that I know that now. I thought there were set co-op skins, like, but there's not. They're literally, they're all customised Arnos, which is amazing. In another interview, he did actually say there's there's over a hundred variable weapons, so over a hundred different weapons you can get in the game. That's in, that's an insane amount of weapons, and it's really cool that you can get all the different outfits and armor. But that is all I have to say for this video. Sorry, it's been a bit long. I might try and cut it down at the minute. It's like nine and a half minutes. I'm really rambling now, but I will see you guys next time. Smack the like button if you enjoyed. Add to your favorite. Subscribe if you are new. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.
shooting cannons out, I'll be sitting far.